back in the house of the Lord, worshiping with the saints. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Turn with me, if you will, if you have your Bibles, and Luke's Gospel, the 19th chapter. I'll share with you that familiar story from the first 10 verses. And then in the book of Acts, chapter 5, just one verse. Acts chapter 5, verse 30. Luke 19, beginning with verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Acts chapter 5. Verse 30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Amen. Trading places. That's what I want to talk with you about today, trading places. scene of the text is a city street in the town of Jericho. Jericho is a center of commerce located in the plains of Moab near the Jordan River. It is a financial hotspot, bustling with businesses of almost every kind. In the midst of a normal day's activities, while business owners were making deals, while store proprietors were making sales, while farmers sold and bartered their product, while government offices and the courts operated as usual, and while camel, donkey, horse, wagon and chariot traffic was heavy as usual, a large crowd of pedestrians have gathered on one of the city streets. Some people are walking along the street together. Others have lined the sidewalks. All the hopes of seeing a man whose fame has gone from Nazareth in Galilee to Jerusalem in the mountains of Judea to Jericho in the Jordan Valley. Mm -hmm. This man's reputation has preceded him. He has a good reputation. He's known to be a kind and compassionate man, a friend to the poor and the outcast. He's been seen to perform miracles which have blessed many. He's healed some who were sick and others who had crippling conditions. He's even raised the dead. His name is Jesus. And everybody wants to see him. They gather around him as he walks along the Jericho streets. Each person is trying desperately to 
get ever so close to Jesus. If they can, maybe, just maybe, he'll bless them. The crowd is growing larger and larger. It's gotten so large that it will take a miracle for some of them to get to Jesus. There's one person there in that crowd who needs an even greater miracle. It will take a miracle for him just to see Jesus. His name is Zacchaeus. He is a resident of Jericho. Zacchaeus is well known but not well liked and certainly not well loved. He is a tax collector. What's known as a publican a representative of the Roman government who collects taxes from the citizens. Zacchaeus has moved up through the ranks and has earned promotion so that he is now the chief tax collector of Jericho. He, through the years, has earned a reputation, but unlike Jesus, Zacchaeus' reputation is not good. His business practices have made him much despised. No one likes paying taxes, even a fair amount, but Zacchaeus and his team of tax collectors overtax the citizens. He leads a system of tax collectors which cheat citizens, forcing them to pay more than they actually owe, bringing false charges of smuggling in attempts to extort hush money for, for fees. Mm -hmm. well. Publicans were regarded as traitors because they oppressed their own people on behalf of the Roman government. They taxed people for everything imaginable. The number of axles on your wagon, the number of wheels on your cart. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'd have to pay tax to enter the market, to cross a bridge, to walk along a road, or to cross a river. Well, the practices of the publicans were deplorable. Mm -hmm. In the text, on the same street, in the same vicinity, at the same time, were two people who were diametrically opposites of each other. Well, Jesus and Zacchaeus. They were as different as night and day, as different as east is from the west. One, Jesus, was the epitome of a saintly man of compassion, while the other, Zacchaeus, could best be described as a cheating, lying scoundrel. But before we give Zacchaeus a beating for his lack of character and his undesirable behavior, be aware that at this time of the text, something out of the ordinary is going on with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is, by societal standards, a successful man. He has position as a publican, the chief tax collector, with a slew of junior tax collectors reporting to him. He has power as he forces people through illegal tactics to pay unwarranted amount of taxes and fees. And lastly, Zacchaeus is a man of means. For Luke writes, he is rich. Right. Having heard about Jesus, Zacchaeus has, has begun evaluating his life. He has money and power and position, but he is not happy. Mm -hmm. He has what others long for, but he has no peace. He has heard about the peace which Jesus gives, and he longs to have what only Jesus gives. Luke says, while Zacchaeus was a big wheel in Jericho, he was physically a man who was small in stature. That's right. He wanted to see Jesus, but the crowd in front of him prevented him from being able to see. Yeah. He couldn't peer through the crowd, and he was too short to see over the crowd, and 
No one liked him well enough to let him move to the front of the crowd. So Zacchaeus, desperate to see Jesus by any means necessary, ran down the street ahead of the crowd, climbed a sycamore tree, and sat there on a limb and waited for Jesus to come that way. I wonder, while he was waiting, if Zacchaeus sang that song, When I See Jesus, Amen. When I See Jesus, Amen. All of my troubles will all be over when I see Jesus, Amen. Jesus walked right up to where Zacchaeus was. And the text says, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, hurry up and come down, for today I must abide at your house. Zacchaeus hurried down that tree and received Jesus joyfully. Zacchaeus' life was changed in an instant. His attitude was changed. His, he repented of his sins. He changed from his wicked ways. He even vowed to pay restitution to those he had cheated and mistreated through his lawless practices. He was a new man with a new attitude, with a new outlook on life. He met Jesus, and Jesus changed his life. Come down, Zacchaeus, Jesus said. You went up that tree to see me. I see you. Come on down. Today is your day of salvation. This was a life-changing meeting for Zacchaeus. The effects which reached into eternity. For Jesus told him, and I quote, This day is salvation come to this house. Yeah. Zacchaeus and his family were saved. Amen. Come down, Zacchaeus, Jesus said. Come down out of that sycamore tree. Come down, Zacchaeus, come down and, and have a conversation with me. Come down, Jesus said. Come down and do more than see me. Zacchaeus had gone up that tree because the text said he wanted to see who Jesus was. You can look at someone to see them, to see their appearance, to see their statue, to see their feature, to see their attire, the gait of their walk. But to see who someone is, is different. That is to see beyond their physical stature and to see their personality, to see their spirit. You see their values, what they believe and how they treat others and whether they are honest and if they are people of integrity. To see who someone is, you see the person. To see who Jesus was was to see how he interacted with people. Yeah. It was to see if he was what Zacchaeus had heard he was. Mm -hmm. It was to see if he really was compassionate. It was to see if he was as kind as sinners had said he was. Zacchaeus wanted to see if Jesus' reputation was accurate. Yeah. If what he'd heard was true, he wanted to see if Jesus was a healer. Would he make sick people well and afflicted people whole? Zacchaeus wanted to know for sure. He wanted to have no doubt about who Jesus was. Could he truly be the Son of God? Could he really be the Messiah? Was this the one? It is commendable that Zacchaeus went up that sycamore tree to see who Jesus was. Yeah. But it is a greater blessing that he came down out of that tree where he engaged 
in a conversation with Jesus. Yes. That's where he really saw who Jesus was. Yes. Zacchaeus was maybe looking for a man who would lift his spirits. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was looking for a man who would help him deal with his guilt of mistreating others. Maybe he was looking for a Jesus who would settle his conscience and give him peace. Regardless of what Zacchaeus was looking for in Jesus, he ultimately got so much more. Because when Zacchaeus, at Jesus' bidding, came down out of that tree, sometimes later, Jesus went up another tree. In a real sense, Jesus and Zacchaeus traded places. Zacchaeus came down and Jesus went up. Zacchaeus got out of a tree and Jesus went into a tree. This trading places is not evident in the text alone, but it is in the prophetic passages of the Old Testament and throughout the Gospels and epistles of the New Testament. There in the scripture, it is clear without a doubt that Jesus went up a tree. Yeah. He went up with purpose to save the world and his yeah. doing so provided salvation yeah. to all who believe. Yeah. When Jesus told Zacchaeus salvation had come to his house, Jesus was the salvation. But at the time, he had something else to do to seal the salvation. It was that he would be nailed to a tree and hang there until he died. Jesus didn't go up the same tree that Zacchaeus went up. Not the sycamore tree by the road in Jericho. It wasn't in the same town it wasn't before the same crowd. He was nailed to a tree in which the wood was used to make a cross, which was erected at Calvary, just outside of Jerusalem. The crowd was not there to cheer him on. They were not there in hopes of getting blessed. They were there to watch Jesus die on a tree. Some were there to see if he would save himself. Some were there to mock him and celebrate what looked like his defeat. The tree that Jesus was on was one that he did not climb, but he allowed others to nail him to it. That tree was not planted, but it did bear fruit. It was put in a hole in the ground and utilized as a tool of execution. Jesus called Zacchaeus down out of that sycamore tree, and he later went up on another tree. Jesus traded places with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was in the tree to see Jesus, and that was good, but that couldn't save him. When Jesus went up the tree at Calvary, it saved Zacchaeus. And what saved Zacchaeus also saved you and me. In Acts 5 and 30, Peter the apostle said, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom you slew and hanged on a tree. It was our sins and our needs to be saved that got Jesus nailed to that tree. And for that reason, Jesus traded places with us just like he did with Zacchaeus. He was our substitutionary atonement. Jesus was nailed to the cross in our stead. We deserve to die on that cross at Calvary to pay for our sins. But because we are all sinners, we could never pay the cost. Jesus traded places with us and died on that tree instead. He traded places because we were sinners and only the righteous could pay the debt for sin. On the cross, on the tree at Calvary, Jesus took the punishment 
that we deserve for our sin. He willingly traded places and experienced death for us. Jesus was the substitute sacrifice for us. He was the righteous substitute for our unrighteous behavior. He was the innocent substitute for the guilty. The holy substitute for the corrupt. The perfect lamb substituted for the spiritually lame. Jesus traded places with us. We came down and he went up on that tree for us. There's a song titled, He Took My Place. A part of that song says, there was a man more than a man called Jesus Christ of Galilee. There was a place where Jesus prayed, a place called Gethsemane. There on a hill called Calvary, there stood a cross of agony. Nailed to that cross where I should be, he took my place at Calvary. Isaiah wrote, surely, he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have taken on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed when it should have been us. And he was afflicted when it should have been us. The Lord traded places with us. It should have been me on Calvary. It should have been you on that tree. But like he told Zacchaeus, Jesus told us to come down. You and Jesus cannot occupy the same cross at the same time. You and Jesus cannot be on the same tree at the same time. So I recommend you come down. As I close, the best news today is that after dying on that tree, Jesus did not remain dead. The Bible says he died on Friday. And they took his body off of the tree and placed him in the tomb. And on Sunday morning, as a matter of fact, it was early Sunday morning, before death and the grave knew what was happening, Jesus got up. God raised him up from the grave. And with his resurrection, we are saved. I'm glad that Jesus took my place. And I'm glad for you that he took your place at Calvary. Because he did, those of us who believe in him, have eternal life. And I'm glad that he traded places with us. Because he did, we're saved. Because he traded places with us, we're free. Because he traded places with us, we have a home in heaven. Because Jesus traded places with us, I've got a mansion and you have a mansion in heaven not prepared by a hand. Because he traded places with us, now we have a peace untold. We have a peace like nobody else. We can sing songs that the angels can't sing because he traded places with us. I'm so glad for that day that Jesus called me down. And I'm so glad that I was obedient and I came down out of the tree. And I'm so glad that Jesus didn't leave all trees empty, but he went up where I came down. Allow them to nail him to the cross. Allow them to drive spikes through his hand and his feet. 
And there he hang on a tree. And on that tree he saved us. And that's why we rejoice today. Because we traded places with Jesus. Because he traded places with us. Thanks be to God. He didn't let us stay there. Thanks be to God. He told us to come on down. Thanks be to God. Jesus says you can't handle this. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, but I can. And I will. And he did. And we're saved. Because he traded places. Thanks be to God. He traded places. As the choir sings, the doors of the church are open. Because there's somebody who has not yet traded places with Jesus. There's somebody yet who's still trying to do the work of hanging on the tree for yourself. But you don't need to try that. I can tell you now, you will be unsuccessful. But God can. And God will. And God is saying to you today, if there's somebody here today who came in this sanctuary unsaved, not a Christian. Jesus is saying, don't worry about it. I've got this. I've been up that tree already for you. I've taken care of business for you. All you have to do is believe in what Jesus has already done. I recommend to you today, you believe him. That you trust him. And that you give your life to him. If that's you, would you get out of your pew? Just stand. Get out of your pew. And walk up here as a testimony to the world that you trusted the Lord, that you traded places with him, that you know he saved you, that you know hell is not your home any longer, but you have a mansion in heaven waiting for you. If that's you, as the choir sings, would you come to the front? I'll come down and meet you. The doors of the church are open. I'll be home when the world is gone. When the world is gone. 